For this video, we'll use a car driving around a circular track as our example for circular motion. How can we describe the position of the car as it moves? One way is to place markers, like flags, at equal distances along the road. Let's put a flag every 10 meters. But how are we measuring these distances? Is the 50 meter flag placed at a straight line distance of 50 meters from the starting flag? Not exactly. 50 meters is describing the length of the curved line between the two flags, the line that follows the path of the car, which is the circumference of a circle. A section of a circumference is called an arc, and the length of that arc is called the arc length. So the length of this arc is 50 meters. If we took that arc and straightened it out, as if it were a string, its straight length would still be 50 meters, we could also imagine taking a big tape measure and wrapping it around the road. That would tell us where to place each of these flags. So what would be the length of the entire road? The road is a circle, and the circumference of a circle, c, is pi times the diameter, or 2 times pi times the radius. If the diameter, d, is 48 meters, then the circumference is 150.8 meters. That's the total length of the path around the circular road. Instead of using flags, let's use this curved circular axis. This is how we're going to measure position in circular motion. This looks similar to the axis for linear motion, but instead, it's wrapped around in a circle. And instead of using the variable x for linear position, we're going to use the variable s for circular position. And just like with linear position, the SI unit for circular position is meters. So that's position. What about displacement? Just like with linear motion, the displacement of an object in circular motion is the change in position, delta s, which is equal to the final position minus the initial position. The SI unit for displacement is also meters. As an example, if this car started at an initial position of 30 meters and moved to a final position of 90 meters, then the car's displacement would be 90 minus 30, or 60 meters. And remember, this displacement is not a straight line between the initial and final points. This is the circular displacement of the car around the circular path. It's also the length of this arc, which is why we sometimes also refer to delta s as arc length. Like with linear motion, the odometer in the car would show us our displacement along the circular road. The odometer doesn't know whether we're driving on a straight road or a curved road. It just measures the distance the car travels along whatever path it takes. Even though this track is only 150.8 meters long, what happens to the position and displacement if the car keeps driving around? The numbers don't reset back to zero, they keep going up. We can also visualize things by graphing the circular position of the car over time. After one revolution around this track, the position keeps increasing. It's like the car is driving on an infinite straight road. But what if the car drives in the other direction? Like with linear motion, we always define a positive and negative direction when we set up an axis. For circular motion, counterclockwise, or anticlockwise, is considered the positive direction, and clockwise is considered the negative direction. There may be situations where that's not the case, but if we're not told which direction is positive, we're going to assume it's counterclockwise. As an example, if we graph the position of this car, we can see the car moves to positive 20 meters, reverses direction, and moves to negative 20 meters. The object can move as far as it wants in the positive or negative direction, and we measure its position relative to the initial zero point that we established. So that's how we describe position and displacement for circular motion. 